I'm Mike Gassaway, the new Lifestyle Correspondent, Guns.com. This is Jody Stelsing, stunt stud, gun weapons handler extraordinaire, the guy who did HBO Westworld, the guy who did the Alamo, the guy who's done almost everything you can think of. We're going to talk to him today, and we're going to find out what it takes to be a stunt man, to be a weapons master, and what it takes to handle it all from A to Z in the gun world and the movie set. I'm Mike, the FU at the end is silent. That's Jody Stelzig, stunt man extraordinaire. Let's go talk, Jody. What do you say? All right. Thank you, my brother. Love the animals. All right, I'm here with Jody Stelsick, a real cowboy, collegiate national finals, rodeo, bareback, bronc riding, son of a gun. Jody, thanks for having us out to your ranch here, brother. I'm proud to be out here visiting with you. Thank you, Mike. We're happy to have you all out here in beautiful Caldwell County, Texas, Thank Monday you. afternoon. Love the horses. Love everything about it. Tell me a little bit about uh, your background as a, as a cowboy and a rodeo guy, a stunt man, a weapons master, the guy who wears so many cowboy hats. Mike, I did qualify for the college and national finals back in 95. I was in the bareback riding. Ooh, barebacking, huh? Bareback riding, a really uh, mediocre team roper. Still am. <laughs> Still do it. <laughs> Heading or healing? Uh, both. All right. <laughs> both. Very mediocre at both. And uh, through that, I'd, I was after college rodeoing professionally in the prairie circuit and going all over the United States. And uh, through happenstance, I just ran into a coordinator at, of all places, a horse auction. A stunt coordinator? He was a livestock coordinator. Okay. And he said, hey, I need a bunch of little wiry guys like you for a movie. Well, I, I laughed and probably blushed a little and thought, oh yeah, you know, you." You know what the promises mean, right, Mike, in yeah. this business? Yeah, we've all been there, haven't we? And he was kind enough to leave me his phone number, and he said, call me in two months. I'll have more info. Huh. So I did, and the next thing I knew, in uh, August of 1999, I was loaded truck and trailer, and I was heading to Rock Hill, South Carolina. Are you kidding me? What movie were you on there? That was The Patriot. Some years ago, we started seeing here and in, in other states in the South, just kind of a general decline in people having any interest in the armoring and, and safety aspects of it. Uh -huh. You know, um, for years, and I'm sure like when you got into the business, you saw a lot of times the special effects guy may be doing the armoring. Right. A props master may be sidelining as the armorer. And the, the, dedicated, the dedicated crew that their deal was, hey, we're gonna armor, we're gonna make it safe. This is gonna be a great show. Nobody's gonna be worried. We just started seeing that tail off of people choosing to do that. Yep. And I fell into it by accident some years ago. We were working on an overseas television program that filmed mostly in Texas. And through that, it was such a small, production and they had a need I was I was stunt coordinating uh -huh. it's also helping with the with the large animals and the horses too and uh, I got some of my cousins who worked in the film business down here and we just started putting it together and built just built the deal into what it is now and, wow. it, and the invent the amount of inventory and it's a lot to keep up with Forbes magazine called Westworld interactive event, the South by Southwest event, the biggest and best publicity stunt of the 21st century. And you were in charge of the weapons and making sure everything went off slick and safe. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, it was very interesting because as I'm sure you guys remember from your pre-production and going, you know, two weeks out, at two weeks out was when they, you know, were really able the first off, they got a hold of me. Yeah. And they said, hey, we're we're short on time. We don't know, you know, is this something your company can do? And I was like, I think, yeah, I think so. Let me, you know, let me make sure I've got everything you need opened up. So I called my business partner and, and we looked at everything we had that we had out on productions, your what was in the yeah. warehouse. And they said, you know, 
we need at least 15 of those revolvers and we need, you know, four of those rifles and a couple of backups. Well, those aren't just, you know, growing on trees right. on every street corner here in central Texas. I mean, they weren't using no plastic guns, were they? <laughs> no, we didn't. We, I can, I can tell you for, for us, for a couple of the stunt fights outside, they did, they, they used one of our rubber revolvers. Right. So, which was a necessity, but uh, we actually provided them all reproductions that were incapable of firing even any kind of blank. And then one dedicated blank firing only prop gun that did not have a hollow barrel. Right. So it was the side, the side flare, which is probably the safest blank firing guns you can get now, especially with the cowboy type guns. Right. So. Now I, I happen to be lucky enough to be part of the cast of the of the Westworld thing. I was Charlie Jenkins, the car dealer, so I didn't have a gun or anything. But you 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 required us to all have safety meetings. Tell us a little bit about that on how 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 things stay safe on set. Something I learned a long time ago, and I was real fortunate. My business partner was the head armorer at Euro Disney in Paris, France for Buffalo Bill's Wild West show. Okay. He actually wrote the gun safety manual that they use, that they still use for the show today. I got to, I got to learn from that man. Wow. Not only from him, he taught me, but I got to learn the protocol and we transferred it from a live show to a full theatrical production for you know stage film outdoors like the wonderful Westworld show that you helped out with so much. What what I took from that was, you know, we started seeing when I was talking about the decline earlier. What we were seeing was a lack of knowledge in communication between the armor and the cast uh -huh. and crew, and and a lot of. There could be some instances where there was a, a little bit of lack of transparency. So what we've done is we've opened it up and said, I want, if you're cast and crew, I want you to be, you get to examine this. When this weapon comes on the set, whether it's cold, unloaded, or whether it's gonna be blank firing today, you know, protocol dictates everyone has a right to and Take West, a peek. Westworld was kind of a crazy deal because the the premise of Westworld is no rules, no boundaries. You can do anything you want. But those kind of things are, are very important, aren't they? They are. They are. And and I think with these activations growing in popularity, and and the overall excitement that comes behind them, these are things we're going to have to keep addressing more closely as time goes on. And and I'm sure you hope as much as I do that South by will come back yeah. next year. Guns.com, check us out.